Welcome everybody back out here to Somerset Place. We are standing in what used to be the barnyard area and for this edition of our Lost Building series we're going to be talking about the stables. These are actually uh, one of the few buildings that we know exactly where it was here at Somerset. Um, so to get a little bit of context here, the four-story barn would have been located directly behind me and the stables ran east to west uh, just about to my right here. And we're not entirely sure when these uh, stables were first constructed although they do appear as early as an 1806 advertisement for sale of the plantation. And then they appear again on an 1821 survey map of this part of the plantation. Um, and so this building was designed to house thoroughbred horses and plantation work animals. Each animal probably had its own stall. There would have been uh, a central hallway for access to each of these stalls, as was typical uh, in a southern antebellum uh, stable. So horses in particular were highly valued and highly regarded livestock because they were kept solely for slave owners to ride and to use, in this case, the Collins family. And according to the 1839 inventory, there were 20 horses and 15 yearlings here at Somerset. It was around this time that Josiah III was setting out roads explicitly for he and his family to ride their horses and carriages around the plantation. One of these roads was along the north shore of Lake Phelps, connecting Somerset, the adjacent farms, uh, and the Pettigrew Benarva plantation, and then also one running along the transportation canal out here to my left. And enslaved persons were not allowed to use these roads for any of their purposes. In fact, uh, an enslaved field hand named Uriah Bennett remembered this in particular, quote, Elm and cypress trees were set out. Collins kept his roads good for riding roads between the canal and the elms. You were not allowed to drive carts and wagons on them, only between ditch and elms were for carts. So when it came to actually using these roads, uh, transportation in and out of this plantation, the Collinses were riding in their carriages and there was an enslaved coachman named Wellington Roberts who was driving them wherever they wanted to go. So additionally, invited guests who were arriving at the plantation here also came in carriages that Uriah Bennett remembered were run by two horses and had a driver and a footman, each of whom would likely have been enslaved as well. Now the Collinses enjoyed riding horses so much that there were even two concentric racetracks for horses located out on the East Lawn, which was the Collinses' formal outdoor entertaining space. Unfortunately, horses also brought tragedy to the Collins family. In 1857, uh, William Kent, the son of Josiah III and Mary, was riding out here along the carriage drive when his horse threw him off against one of the large elm trees, and he died as a result of that blow. Then several years, years later, with the outbreak of the Civil War, Union troops visited this plantation after the Collins family had fled to Hillsborough, North Carolina, um, and they uh, confiscated a number of horses uh, here on this plantation. In fact, one of the enslaved gardeners, Fred Littlejohn, helped these soldiers um, bridle and take the horses, a total of 12 of the Collins' favorite horses, which outraged the overseer at that time, George Patterson, um, but this was a means for uh, Fred to uh, exert some power on this plantation that previously he had not been able to. And these losses as a result of the Civil War were reflected in the 1866 inventory in which there were only three remaining horses on this plantation. The stables also appear on this document, although there was nothing listed as being inside uh, of that building. After this point, we're not entirely sure what happens to the stables, um, but in 1890, Jane Davis, who was a resident of Somerset at that time after the Collins family had left, remembered that there was a long row of stables here that were much dilapidated and broken down. Um, and after this point, these disappear from the historical record. And we know that around the turn of the 20th century, the wood house, which we covered in a previous video, had been converted into stables and a carriage house. And so it's likely that the original stables here had been torn down by that point. Um, and so that's a little bit about uh, this lost building here. If you all come out and take a tour, we're going to delve into more about what life was like for everybody on this plantation. Um, don't forget to comment below with your questions, subscribe to stay up to date with our channel, and we hope you guys will join us out here real soon. Thank you.